Devin Arthurs. He's accused of killing his roommates, Jeremy Himmelman and Andrew Anchuk, in their Tampa Palms apartment. Arthurs previously said the pair did not respect his religion when he disavowed neo Nazism and converted to Islam. This video contains the interview of a man who shot his two roommates, Andrew Wonshuk, Jeremy Himmelman, Brandon Russell, and Devin Arthurs built a friendship based on their shared extremist beliefs. Each had been seeking a sense of belonging and order for various reasons. Wonshuk and Himmelman had recently started to turn away from those beliefs, but the lure of remaining in a rent-free apartment with access to fishing was too good to pass up. Arthurs had made the decision to convert his religion and said that the others made fun of him for it, which was the original reason he gave to the police after his arrest. However, his story quickly changed and he became a hero who, through his actions, saved thousands of people from his roommate's plans. While Russell Brand was out of the apartment on National Guard duties, Devin Arthurs shot and killed Andrew Wonshuk and Jeremy Himmelman. Arthurs then walked into a local smoke shop where he held three hostages and then surrendered to police before revealing that he had shot his two roommates back in the apartment they shared. I am. Um, I'm going to search this out. Well, you know what? You'd be surprised, man. Unfortunately, most of the people that they talk to me about this, they, they, don't, they don't say well, stuff like that. So they, um, they themselves were not. Yeah, well, well, I'll tell you what, I, I don't mean to interrupt you, yes, sir, but before. Before we get into all that, yes, sir. before we get into the meat and potatoes, so to speak, yes, sir. I have to read you some things and go over some, some formalities. Okay. okay. Um, okay. Once my partner gets in here, we'll, we'll go that, go that route, right? I'm going to start a record, recording here, so it's all documented and memorialized, okay? Yeah. All right. For the record, my name is Kenny Necklinger. I'm a detective with Tampa Police. This okay. is Gary Sandell, also a detective with Tampa Police. Uh, we are here at 411 North Franklin Street Police Headquarters in reference to a homicide investigation. And that investigation case number is 17-260921. The date is May 20th, 2017. It's about 1.24 a.m. Also here with us is, your, sir, can you state your name for the record, please? My name is Devin Sean Ryan Arthurs. And your date of birth, please? My date of birth is March 18th, 1999. Okay. And, Devin, before I read you, are you familiar, well, are you familiar with your Miranda warnings? Yes, sir. Have you ever had them read to you before? I had them read to me by a police officer on the way here. On the way here, he read them to you, okay. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. Did you understand them when the, the officer read them to you? Do you have any questions about it? No, I don't okay. have any questions. Uh, okay. I'm going to read them to you again, so forgive me. I'm not, not to insult you, but it's just it's, it's, no, it's, it's, what we have to do is for your protection. Yeah. And um, before I get before I do that, I want to make sure that uh, I'm dealing with an individual here who has a clear mind. Are you under the influence of any narcotics or alcohol no, or any... No, uh, I'm completely so. No. Okay. No prescribed medication, no cold no. medicine, nothing at all? No. Okay. Uh, do you or have you ever been diagnosed with any kind of mental illness or any, uh, anything like that that might prevent you from having a conversation where you understand what I'm saying or understand what you're saying? No, I don't. I've never been prescribed with that. But okay. I, wish, I wish I went to a hospital before this. I wish I had uh, listened to my family and just like... I wish I had uh, followed what they were recommending me to do and stuff like that. What's that regarding? Uh, regarding like, you know, me going over there and, pot and going to get help, like going to a hospital. Arthurs mentions that his family wanted him to get help, something that he now thinks he may need. While this is true, it is unfortunately too late for his roommates. It was mainly over like depression and stuff like that. Okay. Yeah, but it never over, like I never um it was never anything like to this severity and you know, huh. never yeah. Were you taking any medication all that you, no. you never got to no. that point. Never never got to that point. Okay. All right. But well, so up to this point, you've been able to understand any conversations you've had with any other officers yeah. or any other individuals you've come across. Yeah. You're understanding our conversation so far with no problem. Yes, I am. Okay. With that being said, what I'm gonna do is I, I Again, not to insult you, but I have to just to uh, make sure that you're going to be able to follow along with me. Yeah. 
Your education level? How far did you go to school? I dropped out of school. And what grade? I dropped out at uh, 10th grade. 10th grade? Yes. Okay. Did you go to school here in Tampa? No, I went to school in Orlando. Went Orlando? To, yeah, I went to Lake Howell High School. Okay, and in 10th grade, you, you started, did you complete 10th grade? Uh, no, I left midway in. Okay. Do you know how to read and write, though, the English language? Yeah. Okay, do you speak or write any other language? No. Okay. I'm going to ask that you follow along with me. I'm going to read it out loud. If it, I'm going to ask you to follow here with me as well, but okay. if you have any problems or any questions, I'm going to stop at the end of each sentence. You just be, you know, feel comfortable and ask me to explain okay. it further. Okay. All right. All right. All right. And for the record, I'm reading from TPD ten, Form 310. And it's a uh, consent to be interviewed concerning an offense of, and as we've already discussed, as you've already made aware, it's a homicide investigation. Okay. Okay. This says, you have the right to remain silent. Do you understand what that means? Yeah, of course. If you give up the right to remain silent, anything you say can be used against you in court. Do you understand what that means? Yes. You have the right to consult with an attorney before you make a statement or answer any question, and the right to have an attorney present during questioning. Do you understand that? Yes, I do. If you want an attorney but cannot afford to hire an attorney, one will be appointed to represent you before and during questioning free of charge. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. You have the right to, to use any of these rights at any time you want during the interview, and you may stop the interview at any time. Do you understand all that? Yeah, I do. Okay. With these rights in mind, I'm going to ask this sentence right here, I, and if you are willing to talk to me now, Write your name in here. I've had these rights read to me. I understand them, and I'm willing to talk at this time. No threats or promises of any kind have been made to coerce me to make a statement. Do okay. you understand that last part? Yeah, I do. Okay. Yeah. If you understand these rights, I ask that you print your name here. Yeah. Print inside the bottom, and then with your initials up there as well. Right here? You can. So initials right there. Do I check that, or do I? You can. Yeah, you can check it. Okay. There you go. I'm going to put right my name. Initials here. Oh, okay. My bad. And then print your name on that line. All right. And then down here. So I want time print and sign, please. All right. All right. All I'm gonna do right here. I'm gonna write my name and Detective Sandell's name. And the uh, again, this is the. 20th day of May. organization that I was a part of before I converted. What's it called? Adam Vothan Division. Okay. And I remember, uh, and I remember my roommate, Brandon, he's alive, the guy that was in the American uniform. Uh -huh. I hope he gets his shit together. I hope he gets his life together. He's a good person. But the things that they were planning were horrible. They are planning bombings and stuff like that on, count on countless people. They are planning to kill civilian life. Well, do they, were they specific in their plans? Um, power lines, nuclear reactors, uh, synagogues, things like that. And the reason why like I mentioned this is because and it's self evident, you go into the place like there's a giant Azov regiment flag that's in the background. Azov regiment is a organization in Ukraine, which is an NS movement that crucifies people and it's harmed a lot of people that came directly from there. These people were not good people, is what I'm trying to say. came directly from where? Came came directly from Ukraine for the conflict. And okay, you you came from UK. Okay. No, 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 no. Excuse me, no. I didn't come from there. The flag did. I'm saying that where okay. I, I'm saying like for context. Uh, Brandon, how, or, uh, Devin, how did you end up at that apartment? How, how remember, did you how did how did you move in with them and how, so did, how did that go? I'll explain this. Like I remember, okay. I remember uh, when I was four. I'll, I'll just start from the beginning of like these beliefs and stuff like sure. that. Sure, so that's fine. 
when I was 14 and I first like started getting into these organizations and stuff like that. Which organizations? Uh, Neo-Nazis in the okay. beginning. And I remember like I, I remember I converted when I was uh, 17. Converted and, to what? Islam. I remember I was like, I outgrew like the racist sentiments. I was like, this is silly. And, you know, I watched, like, you know, I'm very, I'll be honest, like, I'm sympathetic with groups like Al-Qaeda and ISIS and stuff like that. Um, and I was very, very angry about the coalition bombings. So, I mean, that day I was watching videos of infants that were killed by American bombs. Which day was that today? Uh, yeah, and that's what it was driving me crazy. It's like, that was getting me. And I was also seeing the posts that was being made in an encrypted chat by other members about how they want to kill blacks and how they want to kill... Members of what? Which the other? same organization, sir. Yeah. Which organization? Adam that? Buff. And that, so that one, the one that you were formerly a part of. Yeah, formerly a part of. And I was living there because I was living primarily with the guy in the American uniform, the Brandon. He right. was, and he's a, he's a decent human being that can be reasoned with. What exactly did you say? Or well, they would say stuff like, I want to blow up refugee ships. They would say stuff like they want to go target like blacks, like how Dylan Roof did. These people, they were were not just innocent people. They weren't just my roommates, is what I mean. Have they ever done any bad things? Do they do any specifically that you know about? Maybe you were a part of that you weren't part of? I was of? never a part. I was, uh, we never targeted anybody, but we had plans. We had guys in the American military that literally literally would go to, go to like bases and steal huge amounts of equipment. We're talking Kevlar, night vision, stuff like that, for the intent of, uh, of criminal activity, i.e., you know, targeting government structures, targeting people. This is part of the group that you were, uh, the yes, group that you were a part of? Or? Yes, sir. Um, not to mention, um, like, uh, like, the morality of this group and how these people think. I remember... Um, I, and I did this in the past, I remember when I, we would help Azov Regiment in Ukraine by hacking telecommunication networks that were held by the separatists, right? So we'd hack factories and we shut down electricity. And I remember there was an article that a factory got shut down and a dozen people had died, like frozen to death, and I was horrified by that. I was absolutely mortified. Because you were a part of that. Yeah, I was mortified. And, I remember, and I, it was horrifying because I knew that nothing would ever come out of it. I would wake up each morning, my mom would tell me, like, good morning, and they had no idea. And I remember, uh, I remember I brought this up to a few people that are part of the organization, and they just started laughing about it. They thought it was the funniest thing, and I was horrified by it. And it's like, you know, I'm such an idiot for still living in that situation, for being in there, being at that apartment. How long have you been there? I've been there for several months. That's it. Several months? Because it, my understanding is that uh, Brandon just rented that apartment probably about a month and a half ago. Yeah, about a month and a half, excuse me. Okay, so you've been here about since he rented it? Yeah. Okay. And how about the other two guys? Were they they, they've been also? here for a few weeks. Oh, so they, you were first in there, they moved in after yeah. you? Yeah. Okay. These people would laugh about the concept of like blowing up like refugee ships, and they had the explosives, they had the plans, they had the encrypted conversations. These two individuals, or...? The entire organization. Okay. And it's like, and, and the thing that gets me is um is preserved by what they said. How long did you know these guys? I've known these guys uh, almost for a year. Okay. Where did you first meet them? Met them online first. And then I, I I went up to Boston with Brandon and I hung out with them for a few You met days. Brandon online as well? Yeah. Okay. I, on on a specific site was it the site you mentioned? It doesn't exist anymore. What was it what was it called? It was uh, called um TinyChat through TinyChat.com through a position. It was just TinyChat.com. TinyChat so doesn't. Yeah, TinyChat. Like okay. small, tiny. Yeah, but, but the thing is, is that TinyChat is like kind of like YouTube. You have huge amount of channels and stuff like that on there. The real site where they like where fascists like organize and stuff is called Iron Merge, and then you also have Stormfront. And um, like, is that like that's like a social media group? For yeah, those? Okay. Iron Merge. It's a whole website, and I'm like, uh, I know everything about that site and the people that are behind this shit. And uh, I remember... The detective allows Arthurs to speak without much direction, and Arthurs clearly has a lot to unload. Everything he says is quite disturbing, and all of the sites he mentions will have to be investigated. Though in truth, they are probably already being monitored. I just feel, um... What? Because the guy is that? When the police showed up to the location, they saw that there was explosives in the garage. Um, they can, if they access the computers, they can find that there's a lot of encrypted chats for the organization itself. It'd be easy to track down each, each member. Are these three guys 
prominent members of those organizations? Brandon's, Brandon's the leader of the organization. He is. Yeah, and I was okay. and I was a senior leader at one point. And I remember and how many guys you got following you guys? How many guys are part of this organization? Sixty to seventy. Throughout the world, throughout the country, throughout the country, and okay. uh, and these people were basically, uh, if you're familiar with like uh, the order of Bob Matthews or whatever, he's, he was a guy that killed like a bunch of federal agents and stuff like that. Like that's basically who they venerate. And these people, they they have no human empathy like we do. Like it's it's hard to describe. I wish that if I could go back and do something over. I would sign myself into a hospital to work about my anger issues and my and my rational thinking skills, which I don't think is as at par of like. But I think this goes well beyond anger issues. I think yeah, I think it's something a little a little deeper for you. I think it's more of a uh, it's a passion that you you are in, you're passionate about doing good for for people. You tell these guys today. Walk me through today. You're you're there all day. The three of you guys. Um, yeah, we were there all day, except, except he was at work for a little bit of it, um, for, he was at a recycling plant working, and I remember, um, he came home, I remember, like, uh, I was in these, art, I was on the encrypted chat, and they're saying all this stuff, like, you know. What's this encrypted chat? It's, it's a thing, thing called, it's a thing called Wire, and, um. W-I-R-E, Wire. Yeah, Wire, it's an encrypted chat, and, uh, there's a, there's an Adam Buffett chat on there, people are, like, okay. talking about, like, bombings, robbing, mil like, raiding military, uh, Bases and stuff like that. Okay. Yes, and let me ask you this. this my, and forgive me, but I'm just trying to keep trying to. And you're kind of you're educating me in this whole process, so yeah. I'm going to ask questions to students sitting here. That is, you believe you have a faith. You said, yeah. "What is your faith?" I'm a Muslim. Okay. Does that coincide with this organization you're no. part of? No, not at all. So, no. how long have you been a Muslim? I've been a Muslim since uh, June of 2016. Okay, so fairly recently. Yeah. Have you still maintained a part in this organization, or is that about when your ties to this organization were cut? My main, my main ties to this organization is, like, I was a part of it out of necessity. I needed a place to stay away from my, my family. Not that there's anything wrong with that. I should have lived with them. I was just trying to get out of the house and stuff like that. And um, I would try to, like, I managed to convince some people to, like, drop a lot of these beliefs and stuff like that. And I can feel thankful that I've, that I've done, done something like that. Um, and, uh, that's why I was a part of it. It was mainly to try to get people away from the shit and try to basically, uh... That's when you fed, when you first joined up? No, this is when, no, I was already part of it when I converted. I just, like, when I converted, I was like, I got it. While I'm in here, I can't just leave it. If I left it, then I'd probably be killed or something like that. But if, uh, if I, I'd either be killed or something in that nature, um, but if I didn't do that, then when it comes down to it, like it's, uh, then I might as well try to convince people while I'm there, like almost, like basically convince people, like don't, don't do this, don't throw your life away. But you made no secret about it to even Brandon, I imagine, of your faith, right? They mm -hmm. knew, they knew what you were about. Yeah. And they still, I mean, they still tolerated you. Yeah, they still tolerated, yeah, they did, barely. How, yeah, well, well. This strikes an odd note. Arthur's claims that his roommates hated people of his faith and had dark intentions to carry out in that regard. If that was true, why did they continue to allow him to live there? It doesn't quite add up. Why? What? I, mean, what? I, I honestly don't really know. I think Brandon, like, I think Brandon has a true like, connection with me. Okay. Which computer are you talking about that you did with this encrypted chat? Every computer in the house. But no, the one that you saw, were you watching? Yeah, it was my computer? computer, my personal tablet. Where is that one? It's in my my uh, condo. You'll find like a, a like I pay a lot of con I pay a lot of attention to like Syria and Iraq, like the conflicts over there. But inside like, inside the condo, yeah, there's two bedrooms and a main. And yeah, a it's room. the living room. Which one's your room? The living room is where I keep my computer. Okay, so that one right there, the one that's in the corner there, the main. Uh, yeah. Like a TV in the corner. That's that's your setup. Yeah. Okay. So that's essentially your room. Yeah. So I mean, I remember I remember you were um, in the other room. You were saying, like, I heard the word HMTD is referring to the explosion. Yes, yeah, we're right. discussing Do you, you that, that, that is? 100%. Okay. I know these people, they know, they know exactly how to build, they knew exactly how to build bombs that were, that could have destroyed this entire building. Who were these people? Adam Buffett. These people, okay. yeah, these people. Not these three individuals in there, or they, they, I mean, they're lumped in with that. They, they, yeah, they, they ran yeah, Brandon, Brandon's literally a, literally somebody that has knowledge to build a nuclear bomb. I'm not meaning about that. He is literally somebody that he uh, he's somebody that 
literally went to school for four years to study ra uh, radiation specifically to build a nuclear bomb. And Do like, you know if these materials are inside that gun right now? No, there's no nuclear materials. Actually, yeah, sure there is. Yes, there is nuclear materials in, in that uh, in that garage. There is some nuclear material. Okay, what's in that garage? That uh, in that in that garage sure about? HMTD. Yeah, those explosives. Yeah, some some ammonium nitrate, I believe. And I know that there's some radiated materials that he was able to bring in through the Bahamas. And because he because he's a Bahamian citizen, he was able to bring it bring it in. How did he bring it in? He brought it in through the airport. He was able to spoof the people that were working there with the TSA. Okay. And do you know what the, is it kept in a particular vessel inside the garage? Do you know where it's kept? It's just in the it's in the garage or it's in his closet or it's in, in the supply closet in his room. Okay. Which, and uh, you'll know because it's a giant SS flag uh, above a lot of the equipment, ammunition, and stuff like that. Okay. You know, I the more that I tell you, the more you see the scale of how big things really yeah, are. Yeah. Yeah. No. No. This is uh, I mean absolutely serious stuff. So that's I me. Mean, uh, so it's, any it's information not, you can give me to, to assist with, uh, like I said. Combating these, uh, you know, these misguided individuals, to say the least. Then, you know, I, I think we should make the effort to do that. And it's and um, it's really like uh, the thing that really shocks me as well with it, and uh, about like a lot of these organizations is that they're everywhere. They're everywhere, all over America, all over Europe, and stuff like that. Yeah, people constantly like constantly planning to bomb migrant centers, constantly bombing, planning on um, bombing government buildings just like the one that we're sitting in, and stuff like that. You know, it's it's a real deal. They have a real intent. Like I, I need you both to pretty much swearing that this is not going to get released. I can't give certain information, but that's on. I I'll I kill. What I can do is I can I can restrict certain information inside the report, okay? Sensitive information. All right. Right. If, if, if this is deemed sensitive, which it certainly sounds like you're you're going that direction, then we can make Well I'm, I'm telling you something that I want to you're telling me I'm telling you stuff that the FBI should also be hearing. Okay. And I'm not I'm I'm telling you things that, you know, agencies all over America uh, all over like that I'm I'm not trying to sound like a schizo because I know that I'm trampling over words and stuff. No no I'm you, like, like you you were well you're within control, man. You're, All right. you're you're good. Keep going. And these people, I mean, I, I know like in Russia, in Belarus, in, in uh, Ukraine, we were talking about people that are embedded with NATO forces and NATO is not even aware of them. People that uh, literally crucify people and burn them to death in the middle of, of Ukraine because their POWs captured by the by uh, by captured from separatist forces, um, and it's. Horror, like there's people in uh, in Germany, like plan, like basically planning to place IEDs and stuff like that on road uh, on roads in Dunkirk and near Berlin and stuff like that to target refugees on buses and things like that. I know we're talking on a broader scale, and and I, and I get to, can you can you bring me back to, to let's just talk well not just America. I'm going more specific now. Let's talk about your condo, the four of you guys right. in that condo. Let me let's back you up to when you converted. What led to your conversion? What what was that epiphany you had when you did you come across anything? I remember I, uh, I remember I came across the Quran and started reading it. I was like, this is far better. Mein Kampf, this is far better than any of those. Any of those. Uh, How did you come across the Quran in the first one? Uh, it was given to me. I remember I visited a mosque. I wanted to see what it was about. I wanted to see if what I was told was true. And uh, I was wrong about what I believed about those people. I was wrong about how I felt about certain races of people. I realized that, you know, there's no point in having lingering hatred and stuff like that. There's no point in wanting to kill a man or a little girl just because she's black or, or Asian. As Arthurs describes his conversion, he mentions that he no longer finds it necessary to take the lives of others purely out of hate. If nothing else, he genuinely seems to believe that the murders he committed were for a good cause. And um, I remember I really held on to these beliefs. And it, that really clicked to me, and I started reading into it, and I found the miracles of the Quran and the, the things that really got it. And that's what really like sparked my interest into it. That's what really got me. Did you have any guidance from anybody else that was maybe more uh, you know, familiar with the faith? Or Not did you have any, you were self taught? Self taught. Okay. Uh, I remember I, I would go to. Um, I would go to, like, this has nothing to do with what happened today, but just a little bit of context. Yeah, give me some background. Yeah, that's what I'm asking. I remember uh, I used to go to, like, the mosque in Sly Avenue, a really big mosque. I remember I used to go to Mosque in Open Backer. And those people are very kind and, and good-natured people. They don't have, wouldn't harm a fly. You know, they don't talk about any of the conflicts or anything like that going on over there. So they're, you know, they're fine. They don't have anything to do with, with this. Just some context on how I really came to have this and how, unfortunately, things have gone so out of proportion 
that it's led to what, what we have right now. You know, I mean, all I can really do at this point. Well, yeah. I know you believe that, but I'm asking specifics. Did you do you know about any specific plans that these two individuals had? Yeah, they're planning on going down down south to Alligator Alley and destroying 500 kV lines that were going that were going along the the road there. How are they planning on doing that? They're planning on ba on taking HMTD and placing it at the base of the of the thing and then blowing it up. Just these two individuals? Well, the Brandon. Brandon was going to be a part of that as well. Yeah, I remember. Did they expect you to be a part of that? Yeah, they did. I wasn't going to be part of that, though. Like, even with your current faith, they still expect you to go along with it? Yeah. They were just, I guess. I mean, that's what... I mean, I know for a fact that they wanted me to. I'm just saying, I guess, because they were idiotic to think that I would have went to go do that with them. And I remember um, with the nuclear materials, he was planning on building a mortar and firing it into a... Um, there was a nuclear plant off the coast of Florida, and uh, it's off the coast of Miami, and it's used to power that entire city in Fort Lauderdale and that kind of thing. And they're planning on firing that mortar of nuclear materials in it at, at that plant into the cooling things that are in the water. If that would have happened, that would have caused a massive, massive reactor failure, which would have led to the entirety of the water around there becoming irradiated. And think about a BP oil spill, except it wipes out parts of the entire eastern seaboard. What, what was their purpose for doing that? Oh, well, because they want to, they want to build the fourth Reich. They're delusional. Man. Okay. And they uh, and like absolutely delusional. Are there drugs involved? I mean, no, there's no drugs involved. This is all, this is all uh, unadulterated, just thought. Just, this, this is just their irrational thought. It's not just their irrational thought when they're like built, getting the explosives together. When they're like, so when they're Bert, when they have a guy in the U.S. Army. Uh, go that re-enlisted specifically for the group. This being Brandon. No, not Brandon. This is somebody else in, in the Midwest, uh, in Colorado, I think. Who's that? Uh, Jason. And Who's Jason? Jason. Last name? Uh, I don't know his last name. Okay. But he um he re-enlisted. I'm just giving an example. So we'll show oh, okay. Here. Like he he re-enlisted specifically for the group to go into his uh to go into his supply room and steal stuff like steal night vision goggles, take you know huge met like metric. Uh, tons of ammunition as time went on. He planned on doing that, and he did do that. He got Kevlar. What about Brennan? Because Brennan's uh, Kevlar, currently in he a... Joined, he joined specifically for the knowledge and the training, and he wants okay. to use that training against the government. He, did. he doesn't care about the United States. I mean, he literally had an American flag at the front door that you trample on every time that you walk in. Like, literally, uh, they, these people joined the military specifically to get training, to get access to equipment, and get access to being able to kill people. And they... Um, and to be more efficient at doing so. But, I mean, it's a, I, we keep talking to these people in generalities. I want to specifically talk about the three individuals that lived right. through that right. time. Right. Brandon, Brandon was the only one that was in the military. Is that correct? Yes. Neither you nor the well, other two. Actually, he was in the French Foreign Legion for a little bit. Okay. And um, he phased out of it. He said that there were too many blacks in it, so he left. But okay. um, he was a part of the French Foreign Legion at that point. And um, not in any armed services or anything like that. Uh, how about you? No, I was any, not. Any, do any of you besides Brandon have any formal military training? No. Did, did it, was Brandon helping you guys? Was Brandon providing any kind of training to you guys that he was yes. getting, getting knowledge of yes. in the military? Yeah, Brandon was doing paramilitary trainings and stuff with like that. With you three in particular? Yeah, with, with us three and with a few other people. And from, how did that go about? Where did you guys do that? We'd go to the Ocala National Forest and we would go into where there would be ranges that were pretty much never administrated by like by the people and we would, uh, we would shoot um, we would shoot like basically SKSs, AK-47s, and stuff like that. Where did those weapons come from? Those weapons came from uh, from Brandon going to arms list and buying it basically undocumented, which is legal in the state of Florida. But um, so he was just buying them, uh, outright. Outright, he wasn't stealing from any uh, armory that he's a part of. He would, no, no, he never did that. He's but because his MOS didn't give him access to that to that kind of uh, material. What is his MOS? Uh, like Twenty-five Q. He's uh, somebody that. Specializes in communications, okay. and um, and he didn't do that because of, because he didn't have access to it. You know, he didn't have that. He, excuse me, like he he didn't steal from them specifically because he didn't have access to those materials. And his motivation was specifically training. Yeah, it's motiva yeah, exactly. That's, that's exactly what his the arms he would take care of was on his own. There is no evidence that any training of this type ever took place. There is so much information that Arthurs could have gotten from the internet that it could take quite a while to unravel fact from fantasy. Yes, the training I would get from the U.S. military. Yes. Okay. And he was, uh, and he was, um, 
basically like uh, I mean, if you, if you go into his condo, there's literally a portrait of, of Timothy McVeigh, like on, like on, in next to his bed. Like he's like. You were talking about McVeigh. Oh yeah, he loved McVeigh. He okay. loved McVeigh. He said that like he said that the only thing that McVeigh did wrong is he didn't he didn't put more materials inside the truck to bring the whole building down. So I mean, the, he absolutely like venerated McVeigh. There's a, he loves North Korea too. Dude literally has a North Korean flag up if you go up the stairs. They're did, fucking crazy. Did Brandon ever specifically talk about doing anything similar to that to any government buildings? Oh, uh, absolutely. All the time. Any specific ones? Um, office, uh, like government offices, federal buildings. Um, just in general? Just, yeah, in general. Just did he ever sit down, did you guys ever sit down together and plot out the operation? Yeah, yeah. I mentioned the alligator out. Is there some plans that that's yeah, in Yeah, it's not going to happen anymore. But no, no, you've taken care of that. But I mean, what were those plans? Where were they found? Plans, plans uh, were all said verbally. Things were not written down or, or typed specifically because of this reasoning. However, okay. it's a giant map of the United States where we frequently go there and we would plan and we would look at like streets and roads and stuff like that. I'm not actually plot anything. It'd be just conversation. Yes, verbal. And um, I wouldn't go into that map and see things circle yeah, around. Yeah, there's nothing circle. Push pins, put in certain targets or anything like that. Nothing, yeah, nothing like okay. that. Okay. And cause, exactly because of this reasoning. And I remember I tried to throw them off, getting them to do stupid shit that, that would get them caught. By such as what? Such as, like, um, it's very, very technical, very specific stuff, but I would say stuff, like, I would, I would give them, like, bomb recipes that were basically duds that wouldn't work specifically, like, you know, to drive all the way out there for it to be an operational failure. Now, by, by they being those two or the three of them? Uh, three of them. It's just that I don't really have that much knowledge on, on bomb making. Or Who has like, that knowledge? Brandon. Brandon has Brandon's an engineer as well as the fact that he studied like the radiation stuff. So Brandon's the brains when it comes to the explosives. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, so that stuff in that apartment is him. Yeah, that stuff is him. And but he would also be, would also help with like you know, giving Brandon money to purchase that stuff and that kind of thing. So, so they, they would they would stuff. fund it, but he was the, the the guy that would handle it. Yeah. Those two guys, that, that would be bad news if they were in there messing around with that kind of stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Like How about you? You got any familiarity with that stuff? I feel have basic, basic familiarity. Do you feel comfortable with or is that again, hey, that's Brandon's thing. I, I know enough not to I feel comfortable. It's all up. Uh, I feel comfortable like if I was to move it around, but I mean, like a lot of that is not is a not shock sensitive. I.e., that if you were to send people in there, like a bomb dispersal unit, to go in there and, and examine it, it's not. Um, shock sensitive stuff. So if you slammed it at the floor, it's not going to explode. Maybe, maybe there's something in the cooler with all the duct tape around it um, that might be shock sensitive. Is that the garage? Yeah, it's all in the cooler. cooler. Yeah. Okay. Brandon's family didn't know about uh, about the explosives though. Does Brandon, does, Brandon, does, does Brandon's family know about what he's into? Yeah, they don't like it, but they don't oh. do anything about it. Okay. So they, they acknowledge it, but he's off on his own. Yeah. You know, it's just. Um, and, uh, you know, it's just, uh, it's really kind of surreal for all this to be happening, because, like, I've heard, I've heard them saying, that's why I'm kind of saying, like, that entire tape needs to, like, be an insensitive, like, this entire thing. This, like, you made, yeah, like, it, it, I mean, just by you making that statement, it, it, it's sensitive, man, it's sensitive material. All right, so we're talking about sensitive material, man. All right, you made that clear. So all I right. have to make sure that we have all the bases covered here. Is there anything else in that apartment or that condo that you should think we should be made aware of, especially if we're going to go in there and do any kind of uh, searching or, uh, you know, uh, investigation. What, what's in there that we need to be initially made aware of? You mentioned uh, bombs, you mentioned things in the garage, or at least... Well, the things in the garage are the bombs, pretty much, like explosive materials. There is no timed fused bomb there. There are explosive materials there for making bombs. For now, making them. Nothing for making them. Nothing's been constructed I, yet. Um, yeah, nothing's been constructed yet, but this is clearly stuff that, that is lined up for the explosives there. That's so, the purpose of those items. Yeah, absolutely. So that's, that's, the, that's the entire purpose of them. You guys don't build model rockets and uh, go out in the back and no. shoot them off. Weapons? and bomb-making materials were found in the apartment. However, another member of the group they belonged to said that the occupants were internet trolls rather than serious threats. They enjoyed posing in pictures but lacked any real direction. Others say that the deceased were already losing interest in the movement and moving on to other phases in their lives. Uh, you know, 
or no, the fireworks from Fourth of July coming no. out. There's no, 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 like that. none of that. It's all literally there specifically to kill people. Yeah, is is the if anybody comes across it, is there a uh, a plan, an exit strategy? Is there a this is what we're going to say? This is to make sure we're all on the same page. This is what no. we're going to do with the stuff. No, they never plan that ahead, and whatever planning that they have behind my back is kind of futile at this point. Well, why, why did you remain? Amongst these guys, now it begs the question as to why they tolerated you there. But why did you tolerate being around them? Because I was an idiot, and I was just mainly thinking along the lines of, uh, I was thinking along the lines of, oh wow, I get to stay here in this really nice apartment, in this really nice condo, while paying a rent of like 120 a month, you know, and I have internet and stuff like that, so I might as well just, you know, stay here. Okay. Just deal with like the deal with like uh, the here and there, like like bullshit. You know. Were you working? Um, I, I've been applying to a lot of places to get jobs, but it how do you pay for your hundred something rent? I mean, how I have I have my own money and stuff like that. So where does that come from? Uh, from my parents, pretty much. Okay. All so, right. So I mean, I can. So, um, yeah, I can eat. So like the thing is, is that it was just really cheap living there. I could get away from my family for a bit, live live more independently, and that's the reason why I was there. Unfortunately, I came over, and the, you know this whole. Unfortunate thing is unraveled. Did you get, were you guys living together prior to? Um, well, I, remember, I remember me and Brandon we lived uh, we lived at a co- we lived in an apartment. Um, I'm trying to remember the name of it, but it was an apartment like that before this condo. Here in Tampa. Yeah, here in Tampa. I remember I lived with him, and he was a lot more bearable. He was at he was a lot more a lot less focusing on this stuff. He was a lot more normal, if that makes sense, like a normal human being. So you, you think he has become more uh, focused, to use your words, on the cause yeah. recently? Yeah, I definitely think that. And I think that... Um, has he always been, you know, uh, dabbled in the bomb-making stuff? or Like, he's, he, he always liked it, of like a hobby type of thing in the past, but now it's just more like, you know... Now it's mission-oriented. Now, now it's, it's yeah, that purpose. Now it's, now it's like, we're going to be insurgents, we're going to kill as many people as we can... And uh, then we're going to do this to try to achieve white revolution, as they call it. So this was this was a growing problem. Oh, absolutely. Uh, it was growing, and, they, and their numbers kept on growing and stuff like that. How do you think you would have continued to tolerate this or handle this? Would you, do you think you'd have been driven out at some point? I think that I would have definitely been driven out. Like I was, I, like today, like I was, at my boiling point, I was supposed to just messaging. Uh, my, uh, I was, I was literally I had the Skype open, and I was like about to type, like, dude, I'm packing my shit. I'm going back to Orlando. You know, you guys can go fuck off, pretty much. And I was planning, I was going to then contact the FBI or some local police to go like that. Like, that would have been neat. Did you, when you converted to, to a Muslim, yeah, all right, they were, they were all aware of that. Yes. Did, did at any point in time, did you reach out for any assistance or any guidance or anything from anybody, like on the internet or, or chatting or anything? Or, no. Or you just continued to, to, to do or listen to what they were doing with their encrypted stuff? Uh, no, I did not. I didn't try to reach I mean, in hindsight, it's very stupid what I've done. And honestly, like, it feels almost like, it, all of this feels very surreal, like a dream, if that makes sense. But you used to do a you went to a mosque. Yeah. You were starting to kind of self-teach. Yeah, uh, when you first something. discovered the Quran, when you when you were uh, provided the Quran and you were, yeah. you were reading it, then you went to actually to a mosque, stood one on Sly Avenue. Yeah, you went there and you uh, you immersed yourself in the people that you were targeting up to that point, and realized you know what these people aren't. Yeah, they're, they're not the problem. Yeah, so exactly. Yeah. So you kind of got caught up in 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 that in 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 the religious faith. Yeah, they weren't these. There was no one specifically there that pulled you aside and say, listen. You know, yeah, absolutely. We're, yeah, we're, we're, absolutely. We're, we're planning some things too against this other group. Yeah, 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 you're absolutely right. That, that, no, that, they, like those people, like, they don't even know me by name at that place because I go there specifically to read the resources and stuff like that that were there at that place. So they are just they're, they're they're just there to, to serve out their faith yeah, and religion not, as any other yeah. Christian would do in, in whatever denominational yeah. church they, you know, a Christian would attend. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and you, that is that with you, and immersing yourself in that, the self teachings, the, the readings, you're saying that's how you kind of came around to thinking the way you do now? Yes. There's no, no outside source no outside that, that source. recruited you yeah, or no, whatever you, you know, yeah, you yeah, there, is, there is no outside source, no. Okay. The outside no. source that you were a part of is this other group yeah. that has been, you know, in your head for, for a while yeah. now. Yeah, and I've been trying to find a way to, to get away for a while now, and so I'm already a dead man. Well, do you, do you think that uh, whatever plan that you guys were to carry out, uh, specifically the uh, the uh, lines down on 
alligator alley? Do you think someone else is going to use brain that can continue? Do you think it's still going to happen? Oh, I, I, well, no, 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 it's not going to happen. Um, Brandon's entire, entire condo is now a police, you know, police yeah. quarantine. He doesn't have access to the materials. He doesn't have access to the manpower. But he could, be, he could get it again, couldn't he? Arthurs believes his actions have taken down whatever plot was in place. If this group was as far-reaching as he claims, it is doubtful that the deaths of two members and the loss of the contents of the apartment would stop them. If, yeah, I mean, he could, but I mean, like, it would take a while for him to do that. Okay, why, why is that? You know, this is not something he acquires quickly? Well, I mean, it's, it's just um, not something he acquires quickly. How does he acquire this stuff? I, mean, what, what? I don't exactly know, but I mean, like, he just uh, gets it through channels that, uh, like, through legal and illegal means. By illegal means, like, he'll purchase it off of people that he meets, and I don't know anything about that, but I know that he just purchased it off of people. He went to, he went to USF, so he had access to a lot of these classrooms that had these chemicals, and he'd just steal them. Okay. And, um, and he also would purchase them legally, but in the smaller packets, and over time buy, you know, a lot of them, so it would become, culminate in having a much bigger, you know, okay. quantity of them. So you weren't necessarily part of that operation? No, and you're aware of it because you're there. Yeah, you're aware of it because you're part of the group. And, and, yeah. and at one point, you were a, 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 a card-carrying member really pushing yes. forth the message. Yes. And then at some point, you started to kind of eh, get away from that. You found something you, th you know, something better, yeah. um, more worthwhile. But you were still there. You were still around. All yeah. So you were aware of it through that. Yes. that do I understand that right? You yes. weren't actually going out and being a part of this. Yeah. That yes. But these three were still there. They were still on the cause, yes. and, they, and, and and you were just privy to all that. Yes. I'm very, very concerned that when I go to the next place, I'd much rather, if I can, go to a hospital or immediately see the doctors when I go to the jail. It's very least be kept separate. Yeah, absolutely, in an isolated chamber, no, and talk to the people, people of B, and they can pretty much, you know, try to get me on the right they stuff. Can, they can do. They can do. Like it keeps separate from yeah. you. Know, it, I mean, it's it's kind of confining for you, but it's it's not it's safe one, though. You well, I'm not concerned. Right? I'm not concerned about the other inmates that would be there. I'm just concerned mainly of like I don't want to. I'm very prone to getting angry a lot. I'm very to the point where I think that I might be kind of sick in that sense. Mm -hmm. um, and I want to get help for that. I want to be able to get to get the proper help. I think that. I would much rather be at a mental hospital where I should have been because my family's been telling me, like, you know, go to a hospital, try to get this stuff sorted and stuff like that. And I'd very much like to go do that. I'd like to see my opportunities in, in trying to get my mind in, you know, right. in place, you know. Because obviously, like, uh, I'm not, I don't feel like I'm capable of, of living day to day, um, like any other like normal citizen like I feel like I just really want to get like the mental help that I can I don't feel um, you think it's beyond beyond your uh, your religion please you don't think that, that you can yeah. find that uh, that help in your faith you think I think that my faith certainly helped me but I mean when it comes to like psychiatric help that's more you of think a, med that's a medical thing you right know? because I mean, you think that's that's where you have to go that's yeah the guess definitely word. that's you need okay. yeah I think that like that I would definitely be better off just like going to a hospital or something like that and just spending like time there trying to get me trying to get my mind sorted. Do you, do you know their families? And, uh, I mean, do, do more, I, family, yeah. are, they, are they still in? Yep. Does he have any family here? No. How about uh, uh, I'm, I didn't meet his family, but uh, they're they're with him. Also, yeah. How'd you guys meet? Him? We drove, me and Brandon drove up to Boston pretty much. I went with him because I figured, like, oh, you know, here's a cheap, cheap trip. I can go. go what was the purpose of going there? What was the purpose of you guys going to um, meet? Yeah, rec recreation. Uh, but, uh, yeah, to meet with them. Recreation as well as, like, networking for the group at that time. If you were to give any advice to the FBI or any other law enforcement groups to identify this group or uh, the channels that are associated with this group, where would they start? Where would you suggest they start? That's too complicated for an answer. I mean, they could, um, I would really need to like meet with them and I need to show them like the resources and stuff like that needed. It's such a huge answer that it's, you know, yeah. Is that the resources, uh, online resources? Or are we talking about online, personal resources? Or? Online and personal resources. And, uh, 
like it's it's absolutely huge like uh it like the answer itself like it'd be too simple for me to say like iron march because there's iron march is storm front you mentioned two iron march in, well, like storm front's just an example of like a, of a fascist like like forum pretty much okay. iron march is an example of like a wholehearted like everybody on there is very very like dedicated huge numbers out and buff and guys on there and um you know, I remember um, they Adam Adam Boffin like uh, like I say Boffin because it's it's like Boffin is in arms. Like, yeah, it's spelled for it. It's yeah, A T O M W A F F E N. Okay. So that's that's how it's spelled. So, so Adam, like Adam Bomb. Like yeah. That's what we're about. Yeah. Although he believes he is in need of therapy, Arthur's does not see the connection between that and his actions and still believes that he has done the right thing. Because he's, he's a nuclear physicist and, uh, like, well, trained to be for a few years. So when, um, so... No, you, yeah. Brandon, you, you didn't create this group. This group was created, you guys... Created by Brandon, yeah. Oh, Brandon created it. Yeah, Brandon created it. Brandon oh, okay. created this group. And, um, I got it, like, I, I mainly, like, figure in my head, like, I could, if I could get, like, a meeting with an FBI agent or something like that, I could shut down, like, not just Adam Buffum, but as several other organizations, like... Probably, I mean, we could probably facilitate that. I would very much like to do that. What? Were you with Brandon when he created this? I was not with Brandon. Did you meet him through this? Um, when he created it, did you meet him he, through... I, I met him through the Tiny Chat, but that's just like, like I said, YouTube, it's like a huge, it's huge channel. But did you meet him with this common interest? Um, yeah, which was specifically like neo-Nazism, and I remember. Okay, so was, and that's how it kind of sparked your conversation with him. Yeah, was he had he already created Adam Buff at that point? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, but it was very small at the time and stuff like that. And um, as the years went on, like uh, just kept on getting bigger and bigger and more and more. You know, people came on came on board with more and more radical views and stuff. But that was by design, wasn't that? It was kind of well, yeah, it was. It, it was some of these people in the military. Yes. Okay, and you you mentioned earlier, and I just want to bring you back to it. You mentioned earlier that one of them had actually re-upped, went back in just for that. Yeah, re-enlisted specifically to steal resources. Jason in Colorado, right? Yeah, so, yeah. And um, and he um, like he, if if I could just talk to an FBI agent like individually or something like that, if I could get my computer as resources, I could show them like all these channels and stuff so like that. So on your computer there is either there's the stuff that you've been a part of with this and it would have would be yeah. you'd be you'd examples of what, what I'm talking about here. So when you well, say you that find, simple you can find say, you can find encrypted channels, you could find uh, you could find names easily, you can find people that I that I've been in contact with and stuff like that. It'd be very easy to identify who these people are through your resources. Yeah, you still have. You didn't, you didn't say. You didn't, yeah, I didn't when, you, you, when you converted, uh, you didn't say. You know what? I'm putting this behind me. I'm, you know, I'm ghosting the entire computer. I'm done. I'm moving on to something better. You yeah, it's still that. there. No, it's still there. Yeah. And what about they just branded and uh, they had some more computers? They stuff? have. Uh, they have like laptops and uh, phones and that kind of thing. It'd be very easy to uh, to go through it and find. Yeah, that will be on there. Yeah. Con phone contacts, wire chat, stuff like that. Very, very easy to get through that. Uh, a lot of these, and these programs don't require, like wire specifically doesn't require like a password or user. So if you just open it up on either of their things, you can find uh, find the resources. Um, so you, you would need, in order to educate the uh, anyone else that would be further investigating this group, you think uh, having your, your computer uh, an FBI agent, as you requested, sit down and go over this stuff. You think then you would uh, open some eyes? You think it? Would, yeah, I definitely would do. I think that it would uh, that it would open some eyes to a much bigger thing than what happened today. Um, and I think that that could definitely, like, uh, you know, basically save a lot of lives overall. I think that that could. Send I was, let me ask you a question, yes, sir. You you would be willing to sit down with, with an FBI agent and explain a lot of this stuff? Yes, absolutely. And you, you I know. want to. Okay. Um, usernames and passwords. Yeah. You, you, you remember them? I mean, you... I don't even need them. I can just... If I... Uh, if... Um, like your phone. Is your, your... What kind of phone do you have? I have a shitty, like, uh, old phone. Like, it's a flip phone. But okay, it's, so it's not... So you don't have, like, a password. Snap password? Yeah, it's a password for it. What about, what about the computer? Um, my um, password is uh, buzzed. 
That's what it is. B U Z Z E D. Yeah, B U Z Z. All caps, all lowercase. All lowercase. All lowercase. All lowercase buzzed. Yeah. Is your computer still? You you said you were on it before all this happened. Did you shut everything down? Or is it still no, open? Yeah. It's still on. It's still on. I just I lost it. Like I um I ever um. Any kind of booby traps on it, where if no, uh, no. I'm not talking about like we'll explode, but I mean things would just shut down and, and no. erase if uh, somebody didn't. No, but Brandon, Brandon's computer, I know for a fact, actually has a on his computer he has a encrypted. But I know that you don't have that. Uh, FBI would have would not have a problem getting into um, like brute forcing into those uh, into those electronics. I mean. What about username? That's a password, but what about username? There's no username for like Windows logins for these computers. You don't need to put in the username for these. Arthurs is eager to speak to the FBI, which begs the question, why didn't he contact them with the information before resorting to shooting his roommates? Okay, so just pa just, just the password you said buzzed? Yeah. yeah. But, but what about, you, you, did you have a Facebook at all? No. No Facebook? Any social media at all? Well, actually, uh, think about it. I don't have a Facebook that I used for, like, my own personal use. I had it for, like... I had it for messaging people, but I used a fake name, and there's nothing on there that can be really found. It's just something for that I used for petty, like stupid shit, like like playing Facebook games and stuff like that. What was that? What was the, what's the name of that Facebook? Um, I think it was like John Coleman or something, but it's not really relevant to the case or anything. Okay. Like that. No, but just so you know, obviously in this day and age, it's going to be a standard question. Well, everybody's got a Facebook. You must have a Facebook. This, yeah. is, this is what he has. This is, so they can look at it and say, oh, yeah, you're right. This is used for nothing more than petty games. You know, this is uh, still like really overwhelming, like uh, all of it. You know, I mean, it's all that's happened? Yeah, all yeah, that's well, happened. I mean, I mean, and it, 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 you know, I, um, in the meantime, you've also expressed on numerous occasions that you wish to reach out to the FBI specifically yeah. um, about maybe doing some good, um, you know, having some good come from this horrible event today. Yeah. Uh, and, and it may be it may be something worth worthwhile. I mean, they're going to obviously be made aware of this, and they're going to do their homework to ensure that. Listen, and this is this is just being from speaking from a practical standpoint, just to make sure that you're not talking out your ass about something here in order to maybe gain some some favorable treatment. No. I mean, they have to, they have to confirm. No, I'm saying this is what they're, they're going to listen to this and say, well, let, let's make sure this stuff's actually in Well, I mean, the main thing that, that is really, like, true, if you ever just, even just walked into the condo, you walk into the condo, you know, it's going to seem really out of whack. You have giant North Korea, you have a big North Korea. Yeah, it's gonna, uh, it sounds like what you've painted a picture of is going to reek of, of, of new strategy. Yeah, absolutely. But it's, and I'm terrified of that happening with me. That will get people killed. That, I, that doesn't just endanger me, that endangers I, your lives as well. I don't, I don't condone that type of thing from police departments. Uh, we don't operate that way. Mm -hmm. Okay, what, you know, what, what happens in here is for strictly legal purposes is not for entertainment purposes which is what i consider that kind of stuff we need like, not release something like this no this right. is part of this case all right i appreciate that and that's more important than yeah i'm not trying i'm not trying to be, i'm trying not to be like a, like an ass or anything you're not, man, i you're understand not. that it's just like your lives would be endangered too i'm just saying we listen we don't we don't necessarily have uh, you know have a subjective thought in this in this whole situation, okay? Mm -hmm. So we are in the business of just getting the truth out there. We're not in the business of putting anyone else's life in danger. As a matter of fact, we're in the business of preventing. The detective assures Arthurs that all of his claims will be investigated. Arthurs expresses concerns for the safety of himself and the detectives for having that information, which shows a degree of paranoia. Devin Arthurs was charged with two counts of first degree murder three counts of armed kidnapping, and two counts of aggravated assault. Since 2020, Arthurs has received competency restoration treatment after experts told the judge that his mental condition made him incapable of a rational understanding of the court proceedings. They diagnosed Arthurs with schizophrenia and autism, among other conditions. His trial is still pending. And that's the end of today's video. If you liked what you watched and want to support the channel, hit the like button and check out my Patreon link in the description. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.